Well, he got to see uh, some behind-the-scenes information from the Seahawks' war room to find out exactly why Seattle made the picks they did and when they made those picks. John Boyle of Seahawks.com joining us now on the Emerald Queen Casino Sportsbook Hotline. John, your latest column is up on Seahawks.com. If anyone wants to check it out, it is a really, really cool behind-the-scenes look at what went into some of the Seahawks' decisions. So um, I'll start with uh, not a question about a particular pick, but is there any one piece of information or a story or a decision that you learned about that was most surprising when it came to this article? You know, staying away from individual picks, I think it's probably just, you know, especially those first two rounds, it's just like how true to the board they're staying. I say the first two rounds, it's hard. The, the board's a little more muddled at the bottom, and honestly, where I'm allowed in the room, I can't see it as well. So I'm not mm-hmm. saying they didn't stick to the board. It's just harder to tell as things are going so fast. But those first two rounds, you know, I think people assume, like, yeah, they say they took best of ill, but they really reached to yeah. fill this position. But, I mean, every one of those picks, it was just very clear, okay, this is this is how it's set up on our board. You know, obviously, you know, I think we all knew defensive line looked like the biggest need probably, and, you know, maybe in the second round, interior line or something like that. But um, they just, you know, they, they were true to it. And they said, you know, boom, 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 these are the guys we have highest up right now. We're going to take them. Boyle, um, two years in a row, I feel like that's been the approach. Before that, there are some stretches, I think, and I, I think others would agree as well. Um, these past couple drafts, has that been an emphasis? I mean, we hear John talk about it. We hear Pete talk about it. But somehow it seems like they've been influenced in the past. I mean, what is that the feeling that you got that there was no budging? No matter what happened, this was going to be the approach. I think so, but I also think, you know, it probably has, you know, we talk about like why last year's draft class was so good. It, I don't know if it's as much – okay, they were true to their board on the day of, but it might have also been how the job they did, you know, in the process leading up to it of setting that board of, you know, like John Shires talked about a whole bunch of, you know, they're doing a better job, they feel like, of getting to know the players, the competitors, kind of what drives them. And that's kind of the theme they've talked about with last year's class in particular, just sort of the, the competitors they got, the guys who were ready to come in and challenge right away. You know, of course, it kind of worked out that, you know, yes, Charles Cross was way up high on their board, but he also came into a position of obvious need. So in some cases, it's sort of the need matched the best player available. So that guy's going to come in and start. So, I, you know, I, I don't think in past years, I, you know, I'm not going to pretend I've been in that room every year and can tell you, but I don't think it's been that they've gone all over the place, you know, reaching for guys if positions of need in past years, and that's why they've struggled. Mm-hmm. Although John Schneider did say, you know, in a few cases that has led to problems, but I think it's more that you know the months and months of work, really a year of work, into that process of how they're evaluating guys. Um, they had been talking, particularly John Schneider, in the weeks leading up to the draft about the lessons that they'd learned from self scouting their own approach in previous mm-hmm. drafts. John, when you were listening to some of those conversations about um, Schneider talking about what he learned, were there any specific players, drafts, years that came to mind where you thought, oh, I bet that was a learning opportunity? Uh, you know, maybe. So I don't want to single guys out. Right, like, of course. Uh, that, you know, they, they mess up. I mean, but we can look, I mean, we can all look at, you know, guys they've drafted in the early rounds that, that haven't panned out as well. And I don't think it's always one thing. It's, you know, maybe, maybe one of those was where John felt like they did reach a little bit. Maybe one is where they just didn't have the guy nailed as well as they thought. And sometimes you just get crappy injury luck. I mean, Rashad Tenney was a guy that, you know, was never injured in high school and college, and that was a big reason they liked him so much. He was so durable and healthy, then he comes to the NFL and gets hurt over and over again. So sometimes you just get unlucky as well. Now, John, you were in the draft room, right? Yeah, I was kind of in and out. I wasn't in there for the entirety of every round, but I was kind of popping in and out when the Seahawks were getting close to the pick game, and then I'd go back to the media room and work and just sort of back and forth all day. Awesome. So what – What's the feeling there? Is it tense when you walk in? Is it tense? Is it relaxed? How do the Seahawks operate under these situations? It's pretty relaxed. You know, I don't have any others to compare it to, but I think it's just sort of the the culture Pete Carroll and John Shire built around that building. That's just sort of relaxed. But like, yeah, when they're on the clock and they're trying to figure out, you know, I wrote about this in the story, but they're, you know, they're taking their full time some some of these picks to see if a trade can materialize or, well, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba, you know, they they love the player, but they were having some extra last final conversations with their medical people because obviously he you know john schneider alluded to his, his evaluation was a little tougher because of the injury last year so um you know I, it's not like tense and that people are yelling at each other or anything but you can just sort of feel the tension raise up a little bit when that clock's counting down but otherwise you know they got music playing they're cracking jokes it's you know it's a pretty light pretty loose place i think that you know when you feel like you're prepared you get to that point and feel like you've done all the hard work already and you're just sort of letting it play out 